Hi, my name is Dr. Jeffrey Chupp, and I'm a practicing pulmonologist located at Yale University School of Medicine in New Haven, Connecticut. It is my pleasure to present a clinical overview of Tezspire, Tezapelumab Echo, the first biologic approved for the treatment of severe asthma without phenotypic or biomarker limitations. Tezspire is indicated for the add-on maintenance treatment of adult and pediatric patients aged 12 years and older with severe asthma. Tezspire is not indicated for the relief of acute bronchospasm or status asthmaticus. It is contraindicated in patients with a known hypersensitivity to tezapelumab or its excipients. Additional safety information will be provided during this presentation. Please note that this is a promotional presentation sponsored by Amgen and AstraZeneca, and there are no continuing medical education credits associated with this program. The objectives of this presentation are twofold. First, we will explore the role of TSLP in severe asthma. Second, I will discuss Tezspire, Tezapelumab Echo, the first biologic approved for the treatment of severe asthma without phenotypic or biomarker limitations. The airway epithelium plays an important role in the pathogenesis of severe asthma. In addition to serving as a barrier, the airway epithelium acts as an environmental sensor that responds to diverse triggers. In response to damage and environmental triggers, the epithelium releases alarmants, including thymic stromal lymphopoietin, or TSLP, which can activate multiple immune cascades, perpetuate inflammation, and drive smooth muscle dysfunction that can contribute to airway hyperresponsiveness. TSLP acts at the top and throughout the inflammatory cascade. By acting at the top of the cascade, TSLP is involved in the production of multiple downstream inflammatory mediators, including IgE, interleukin-4, interleukin-5, and interleukin-13. And it can activate immune cells, including eosinophils. In this way, TSLP can drive both allergic and eosinophilic inflammation. We know that some patients do not have classic type 2 driven asthma also known as T2-driven. Multiple factors, including the interplay between mast cells, airway smooth muscle cells, and airway hyperresponsiveness, can contribute to asthma in a T2-independent manner. By acting at the top of the cascade, TSLP can drive these T2-independent effects, which can be a feature of both T2-high and T2-low asthma. As you might anticipate from the previous slide, there is scientific literature that implicates a role for TSLP in the clinical and physiologic aspects of asthma. TSLP has been associated with increased asthma severity, reduced lung function, increased risk of asthma exacerbations, and the development of airway hyperresponsiveness. Clinicians have an approach for targeting TSLP in patients with severe asthma. Tezspire is a human monoclonal antibody that targets and blocks TSLP at the top of the inflammatory cascade and helps prevent TSLP from binding its receptor. By blocking TSLP at the top of the inflammatory cascade, Tezspire was shown to impact two hallmarks of asthma, airway inflammation and airway hyperresponsiveness. The mechanism of action and the clinical significance of this outcome and its impact on asthma have not been established. In the 52-week Navigator study, Tezspire impacted the levels of three commonly used clinical biomarkers, blood eosinophil counts, exhaled nitric oxide levels, and total serum IgE levels. A reduction in blood eosinophils and exhaled nitric oxide was observed as early as week two. This was sustained throughout the 52-week study. Please note that these results are descriptive only. Tezspire also impacted tissue eosinophils and airway hyperresponsiveness, also known as AHR, in the Cascade study. Patients underwent bronchoscopy and biopsy after receiving either Tezspire or placebo for up to 52 weeks. Treatment with Tezspire resulted in an 89% reduction in airway submucosal eosinophils, 
versus a 25% reduction in placebo-treated patients. The assessment of AHR was an exploratory outcome in the Cascade study. This figure shows the change in absolute dose of inhaled mannitol required to result in a 15% reduction in FEV1, otherwise known as the provocative dose 15, or PD-15. AHR, as measured by a response to mannitol, was reduced in patients treated with Tezspire compared to placebo with the end-of-treatment mean change from baseline being 197.4 mg with Tezspire versus 58.6 mg with placebo, indicating a reduction in AHR with Tezspire. As previously noted, the clinical significance has not been established. The efficacy and safety of TESPIRE was evaluated in two 52-week pivotal studies called Pathway and Navigator. Pathway and Navigator were randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled exacerbation reduction studies. Pathway was a phase two dose-ranging study in patients 18 years of age and older with severe asthma. Navigator was a phase three study in patients 12 years of age and older also with severe asthma. There were no baseline biomarker requirements for entry into either study. The primary endpoint of both studies was the annualized asthma exacerbation rate. Collectively, Pathway and Navigator evaluated the efficacy and safety of Tespire in over 1,300 patients with severe asthma with a history of two or more exacerbations requiring systemic steroids or hospitalizations in Navigator or in pathway, two or more exacerbations requiring systemic corticosteroids or one asthma exacerbation requiring hospitalization over the previous 12 months. Patients were randomized to receive Tespire 210 milligrams every four weeks, the FDA approved dose, or placebo by subcutaneous injection. Patients in both studies remained on their background asthma therapy, which included medium or high dose inhaled corticosteroids, and an additional controller medication with or without oral steroids for the duration of the studies. Once again, the primary endpoint in both studies was the annualized asthma exacerbation rate. The Pathway and Navigator studies enrolled a broad, all-comer patient population. Patient demographics were similar between the two studies. However, the number of exacerbations in the previous year was slightly higher in the Navigator study. Patients were approximately 50 years of age and predominantly female. 9% of the patients required chronically administered oral corticosteroids. The mean predicted FEV1 ranged between 60% and 63% predicted. What do we mean when we say the studies enrolled a broad, all-comer population? It means there were no biomarker limitations or requirements for entry into either study. As you can see, Patients had a range of blood eosinophil counts, FENO levels, and the studies included patients with and without perennial aeroallergen sensitization. In a broad, all-comer population, Tespire consistently demonstrated statistically significant reductions in asthma exacerbations. In the pathway study, there was a 71% reduction in asthma exacerbations, while in the navigator study, there was a 56% reduction in exacerbations with Tespire compared with placebo. Tespire is the only biologic to demonstrate a statistically significant reduction in asthma exacerbations in patients with blood eosinophil counts less than 300 cells per microliter. Reductions in exacerbations, regardless of phenotypic profile or biomarker level, were observed in patients taking Tespire. In a post hoc pooled analysis of pathway and navigator, fewer exacerbations were observed in patients receiving Tespire compared to placebo, regardless of baseline blood eosinophil count, exhaled nitric oxide level, or allergic status. These results are descriptive only. Tespire also impacted asthma exacerbations requiring emergency department visits, urgent care visits, or hospitalizations. Over the 52 weeks, patients receiving Tespire had an observed relative difference of 79% in exacerbation-related emergency department visits, urgent care visits, or hospitalizations. 
Similarly, there was an observed relative difference of 85% in exacerbations requiring hospitalization in patients treated with Tespire compared to placebo. These results are descriptive only. In addition, Tespire provided a rapid improvement in lung function that lasts in an all-comer population. At week 52, treatment with Tespire resulted in a 230 ml improvement in FEV1 from baseline which was statistically significantly greater than the improvement with placebo. FEV1 improvement with Tespire occurred rapidly with 70% of the lung function improvement achieved at two weeks and was sustained throughout 52 weeks. Please note that Tespire is not indicated for use as a rescue medication. Adverse reactions that occurred more commonly in Tespire treated patients compared to placebo at an incidence of greater than or equal to 3% included pharyngitis, arthralgia, and back pain. Tespire offers one straightforward approach to dosing. Tespire is supplied as a fixed dose once every four weeks. There is no loading dose, no variation in dosing schedule, no weight-based dosing, and no dose adjustments based on biomarker levels. Hypersensitivity reactions were observed in the clinical trials, example, rash and allergic conjunctivitis, following the administration of Tispire. Post-marketing cases of anaphylaxis have been reported. These reactions can occur within hours of administration, but in some instances have a delayed onset, i.e. days. In the event of a hypersensitivity reaction, consider the benefits and risks for the individual patient to determine whether to continue or discontinue treatment with Tispire. It is important to know that Tispire should not be used to treat acute asthma symptoms, acute exacerbations, acute bronchospasm, or status asthmaticus. Do not abruptly discontinue corticosteroids. Dose reductions, if appropriate, should be gradual and may be associated with withdrawal symptoms and or unmask previously controlled conditions. Treat patients with pre-existing helminth infections before starting Tispire. If patients become infected while receiving Tespire and do not respond to anti-helminth treatment, discontinue Tespire until the infection resolves. Avoid use of live attenuated vaccines. Most common adverse reactions include pharyngitis, arthralgia, and back pain. In summary, Tespire is the first and only biologic for severe asthma without phenotypic or biomarker limitations. Tespire blocks TSLP at the top of the inflammatory cascade to reduce inflammation. Patients treated with Tespire experienced up to a 71% reduction in asthma exacerbations, and there was up to a 79% reduction in exacerbations requiring hospitalizations, emergency department, and urgent care visits. Thank you for taking the time to learn about Tespire. For more information about Tespire, including the full prescribing information and patient information, I invite you to visit tespirehcp.com or scan the QR code shown on the screen. Thank you for watching this video on the clinical overview of Tespire, Tezapelumab Echo.